Now, Musa alayhi salam says, Rabbi shahli sadri, and the second thing he asks is, وَيَسِّرْ لِي amri. Make my mission easy for me. Who makes the mission easy? Which means by definition, by default, some of you are technical background, the default position is a mission is hard. And the only one who can make it easy is Allah Azza wa Jal. And He only makes it easy when first of all you have an open chest. You're positive. And you're a source of positivity for others. Then He acknowledges His own weaknesses. That's the third step. You have to acknowledge where you're missing. What He was missing was sometimes He couldn't speak clearly. So even if you're carrying the word of Allah, your, the word of Allah is perfect, but I'm not perfect. The word of Allah is perfect, but my da'wah is not perfect. And I have to acknowledge what about my da'wah and what about my speech and what about my ability is not perfect. And I have to ask Allah to cover my mistakes. And so he says, Wahlul uqdatan min lisani. Untie the knot in my tongue, I'm not the best speaker. Fir'aun is one of the greatest politicians in human history, which means he's an amazing speaker. Politicians are great speakers. They give speeches regularly. And Musa alayhi salam has a stutter. There's no, no way you can win this debate. So he says, Ya Allah, I have a deficiency, you need to help me with it. I need your help with this deficiency. And then finally, finally, look at this. He says, by the way, what's he going to share before I share this with you? What is the job of Musa alayhi salam? The job of Musa alayhi salam is to share the word of Allah. Yes or no? Yes. But he says, Yafqahu qawli. So they understand what I say. What is he going to say? What is he going to say? The word of Allah, isn't it? He's going to say the word of Allah. But the word of Allah should be understandable on its own. Why does, what does he have to say? And why didn't he say, so they understand your words? Why did he say, so they understand what? My words. Because the Quran is the word of Allah, but on this mic right now is not the, this is my voice. That's my voice. I have to try to explain it. I have to try to express it. And even though the word of Allah is perfect, the way I explain it will be what? Imperfect. And I have to try to make sure people understand. My primary concern is I have to help people understand. So I have to know who I'm talking to. I have to understand what kind of words they can understand. What they find difficult, what they find easy. I, don't, I cannot make things complicated for them. Because I'm concerned about them understanding. In other words, the job of a da'i, the job of someone who carries the word of Allah, his final concern, first you understand where your weaknesses are, then you understand how do you make sure your audience will what? Understand. You don't just start talking, you, I read something in a book and I start talking about it, and I don't care if it was, it was complicated for me, but I enjoyed it, so now I talk in complicated language, nobody understands what I'm saying, but who cares? No, 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 no. I have to speak in the language that people will actually understand. That is the sunnah of Musa alayhi salam. And when that happens, everything will work out. I'll fast forward in the story of Musa alayhi salam. I'll just share one thing with you about Musa alayhi salam. Then I'll give you the example of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. I want you to think about this. Who was supposed to battle with Musa? You know, when he threw the staff and the hand, who was supposed to battle with him? The magicians. You guys know that, yeah? So in Surah Al-Shu'ara, Allah tells us that the magicians were heavily financed. They were gathered from all different cities, the best of them. وَبْعَثْ فِي الْمَدَائِنِ حَاشِرِينَ Gather all the best magicians from all the cities. Fine. Then, they were made popular. In other words, Fir'aun was already humiliated. Everybody knew that Fir'aun was defeated by Musa alayhi salam. So now, Fir'aun looked very bad. So he wanted to make the magicians look good. Okay? So he spread, spent a lot of money and a lot of campaign telling the people that the heroes of Egypt are who? The magicians. And they will save our nation from this threat of Islam. They will pr protect our nation. So you, all the people need to be fans of who? The magicians. So much so that there's an ayah in Surah Al-Shu'ara that people started thinking, لَعَلَّنَا نَتَّبِعُ السَّحَرَ إِنْ كَانُوا هُمُ الْغَالِبِينَ Maybe we'll end up following the magicians if they win. In other words, maybe the government will not even belong to Fir'aun. Maybe the government will go to the magic, that's how popular they became. That's how popular he made them. And then on top of all of this, people did not want to, you know, Yawm Zina, the day on which the battle was supposed to happen. How do you make sure everybody comes out and watches? Because he wants to make sure the entire country watches this. He needs to make sure everybody sees that Musa has been crushed. So what does he do? We find in the Quran, وَقِيلَ لِلنَّاسِ هَلْ أَنْتُمْ مُجْتَمِعُونَ 
people were told, are you coming or what? People were forced to come out to watch this battle. And everybody was told by the military and by the campaign that your heroes, the one that you will listen to is who? The magicians. I'll fast forward. Musa alayhi salam throws the staff. It eats all of their ropes and their rods. And who falls in sajda? Magicians. And then magicians get up from sajda and they say, Amanna bi Rabbil Alameen, Rabbi Musa wa Harun. We believe in the Rabb. We believe in the Rabb of Musa and Harun. Who paid for the stage? Who paid for all the audience to show up? Who paid for the campaign? Listen to them, listen to them, listen to them. Who spent hundreds of millions of dollars on the campaign so that they could have the biggest stage they ever had and then they could stand on that stage and Musa doesn't even have to do da'wah alayhi salam. They did the da'wah for him. Who paid for it? Hmm. Allah has a plan. You just have to have sharh al-sadr. Open up a chest. That's it. You could have argued 10 minutes before. So many resources. So much money. So much power. How is everybody going to hear the message of Islam? <laughs> and just 10 minutes later, you see what Allah does. You understand? That's why we have Iman, that no matter how bad the resources look on the opposite side, we don't know how Allah can turn them around and make them in our favor. We don't know. I met the minister from Europe who... Uh, was one of the most inst instrumental in Switzerland, who was instrumental in you know, the banning the minarets back in the day. Right? And after that, he was actually, he wrote against the Prophet wasallam, And they were trying to pass legislation and even encourage people to insult the Prophet in Europe. Wasallam, right? They were encouraging this kind of thing. And he was on the front of the right-wing campaign. The guy took shahada. He's a Muslim. When I met him uh, uh, two years ago almost, his son was with him, he's still not Muslim. And in that conference, he took shahada too. Subhanallah. The people that were the, at the front of hatred against Islam, Allah turns their hearts. Why do we have to be depressed? Why do we have to be negative? So that was the first example, that was the example of Musa alayhi salam.